created us, all things created, the world's created all things, and for the pleasure they are created, the
Pentateuch continues on page 100. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand in your gates, O Jerusalem. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, for purity, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only the Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Father. receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church be gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit. May show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. To the same your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, reading from chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The psalm appointed is Psalm 71, verses 1 to 6. We'll read alternate verses. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. For you are my hope, O Lord God. My confidence shall, since I was young. Glory be to the. And to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and shall be. Amen. from the letter to the Hebrew, chapter 12, verse 18 to 29. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I trembled with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and the innumerable angels in festal gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking? For if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God, is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Shine upon the world that 
on the Sabbath day. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When Jesus laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured her on the Sabbath day, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured. Not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath day untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan is bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When Jesus said this, all his opponents were put to shame, 
and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that Jesus was doing. The Gospel of our Lord. Anointing fall on us, anointing fall on us. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on us, anointing fall on us. One more time, anointing. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on us, anointing fall on us. O Holy Spirit of God, uphold me that I may proclaim you, and grant the words that I shall speak, the meditation of all our hearts. May now and always be acceptable in your sight. You will order our strength and our sanctifier. Amen. Good morning, St. Matthew's Church. And it's a real joy and delight for my wife Janet and our daughter Julie to be with you this morning. Another part of the family not with us just now so they are not here to worship but we are delighted to be here last time i came it was for a funeral um that's not my fault the rector never invited me before so blame it on him but you know i must tell you this one i was walking down downtown kingston one day and somebody greeted me profusely and said, with some walk one. I had to say, no, I am younger and better looking. Yeah. Can you imagine mistaking me for which? Boy, is that is my brethren though. My brethren. Um, he came after your service a couple of Sundays ago to do a healing service for me up in the hills at the Grove Church. And the people love him off again and tell him say must come back. I said, not over my life, buddy. Not coming back here. But we pray God's peace on him and his family as they are on vacation now. The new election has given alternate readings. And so the readings that we have today, we have a a parallel set and it is one of those parallel set that I want to use as a source of our meditation for a few moments and I'm using the book of Psalms not the one that was read by Doc but to use Psalm 46 because I am recently coming out of a second bout of COVID for the year and during please I'm clean now you don't have to worry several weeks have passed since I have had my negative test but in those couple of days 14 days when I was confined to quarters and to special spaces at home I had reason to meditate on the psalm, Psalm 46. You see, the book of Psalms, also called the Psalter, aka known as the Songs of David, also known 
as the song of Jesse's son, also known as the hymn book of the people of Israel, also known as the prayer book of the people of Israel, is a solid body of literature in our Christian scripture. And this body of literature has been a means of inspiration for many, many people throughout the ages. Clearly, one can conclude when one studies the actual text of the Psalms that there were prayers, what the Latin people would call telphilax. These were prayers. Just look at the structure of the Psalms and you can see that there were prayers. But the Latin people also said that they were not just prayers, they were prayers that invited praise. So the book of Psalms, if nothing else, is a book of prayer and praise. We use it in our liturgical concept as prayer. For where it comes in the readings is not as another lesson, even though it is from scripture. It is something of a prayer that we invite ourselves to pray the Psalms. Some conclude that these Psalms, some of them were pre-exilic before the people went into exile in Egypt. So these Psalms, some of them predate David. And some of them clearly, when you look at the structure and content, you'd see that they are post-exilic, after the people came out of Egypt. So then, scholars of scripture have pointed out that these Psalms that we have captured into 150, when you look in some in the Latin Vulgate of scripture, you'll see that they have combined some of them. And so you do have 150 like we have in our, in our Bible or in our prayer book. It's generally accepted then that this body of writings, 150 that we have, can be divided into five books. The first set from Psalm 1 to Psalm 41 is one body, one book. Then the second book is Psalm 42 to 72. Then the third book of Psalms, if you divide it up that way, would be 73 to 89. The fourth book is from 90 to 106. And the fifth book from 107 to 150. Let me tell you again. One, book one, one to 41. Book two, 42 to 72. Book three, 73 to 89. Book four, 90 to 106. And book five, 107 to 150. Now, the Psalms also have a problem with authorship because we call them the Psalms of David. But as I said earlier, some of them predate David and some of them post dated. And some of them are written about him. So when we look at authorship, scholarship is divided on the authorship of the Psalms. So that's even though we give them to David, because he was a little boy with a harp, and he could play the harp and chant, then they don't they say that David never write all of them. But for me, whether him write them or not, it no matter. Because when you look at this body of literature, you see a rich heritage in the church. A rich body that has been used by many throughout the ages. Now I also know that you know 
that in our modern time, people use the psalm for all kind of something. You know that? You know that? Yes, man. People use the psalm as protection. You know? So they do all kind of little things with it. Some use it for destruction. So they go to the Oberman and the Oberman give them psalms to read. You know that? When I, as a boy at the cathedral, one sister, rest her soul, um, tell the other one, she went, read Psalm Fear. So this other sister, knowing what it, she meant, went to the rector and, and said, Rector, the sister said, she went, read Psalm for me. And so rector called her and said, what is this I hear that you're going to read Psalm for your, for your sister, Christian sister? She said, yes, rector, she fast with me. And I will fix our business. So the psalm is used to fix business. You know, anybody trouble you, you know, you just bust a psalm upon them. But I had a little tricky one with a relative of mine. Because, you know, some of you mothers, when you, have, when you used to have children in the early years, would have opened a psalm in the crib. That's all. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So you open the psalm in the crib. And so I would say, Supposing breeze go blow the book and the page blow to a page of destruction, what would happen to the baby? Would destruction come? We have to be careful, friends, what we say about scripture and what we say about our faith. My friend had a problem with breaking in in the community she lived. And so she buys several Bibles and she put one before every door. And then when she got through the kitchen door, she tie on a string on that one. And when she locked the door, she draw the Bible up to the door. And the thief broke in the house through the kitchen window. And she said, see the front in the seat? If I just have a Bible at the window, the thief wouldn't break it. I say that's because that was the easiest, secl most secluded place in the yard for the thief to hide and open the window. The door them face other people, people would see it. We have to be careful, friends, because lest we make out that the Psalms are used. And you know the one for destruction, one of them? You know one of them? One of them is where they said, May her children run about in the streets and grin like dogs, and may her children be fatherless. What Christian is going to pray that prayer for a Christian sister? May they run about in the street and grin like dogs? May their ch her children be fatherless? Who could? That is not a Christian psalm. And I would say that that is not something that we can encourage. But we have them, a rich body of literature, and we cannot overlook them. But this rich body of literature is one that we use. And the one we have today is a solid one. I don't know about you because we say it here, but I miss the days of chanting on the Psalms. You know, when we use the different chants and the Psalms will be chanted. Now, we're kind of lazy and we don't like to learn the chants. So we move from chanting to the metric um, meetup where we use the Psalms, um, we put different kind of slightly adjusted words so we can sing them to common hymn tunes. Very nice too, but for me the chants are just so beautiful. For example, this one, there's a descant to the refrain in the Psalm, in one of the chants that I just love, where when you go to that part and you're gonna do the refrain, say, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold, our refuge. And when the, the, the soprano ladies take that note, you feel like you're in heaven, you know, because it's so rich and, and, and powerful. So let's look a few minutes at the first five verses of Psalm 46. The psalmist is here showing confidence and stating categorically that God's people are safe and secure under God's almighty hand. 
in your hands, Lord, I place today, tomorrow. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Here the psalmist sets out words that proclaim that he has confidence in the fact that once you are God picking it, you're safe and secure under the mighty hand of God because in his hands we place our joys and our sorrows. We place every moment of every day because we know that in his hands there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures and treasures forevermore. The psalm then can be divided, the portion I'm using, Psalm 46, verse 1 to 3, as protection from God. Psalm 46, 1 to 3, protection from God, and Psalm 46, 4 and 5, paradise with God. Paradise with God. My wife is telling that my clothes don't fix. Thank you, wife. Talk too strong. So yes, the first three verses, the psalmist is speaking about protection from God. The psalmist finds security and peace in knowing that God watches over God's people. The psalmist finds his, you know, we had a wreck in our young days. And he used to drive. And he used to be whistling a song. The song, the refrain says, His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let me tell you, he'd be holding his head up like that, you know. And I saw him driving, you know. But him whistling, his eyes on the sparrow. So one, one day he's reversing out of the wrecked yard. And my friend um, was driving a truck on the road. And Karen was driving out of the wreck yard, looking forward and reversing. So I reversed straight across out of the wreck yard, straight into the school gate, without looking, whistling, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Poor truck man had to mount the embankment, truck almost turn over, and all now Karen has seen him. All now, the truth of the world is there. His eyes on the sparrow and he'd know that God was watching him. Because it is true, friends, not because he was driving interestingly. He watches over us. He says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Look at the fish of the sea. Look at the birds of the air. Are you not much of much more value than they? Yes. The psalmist speaks of the security that the child of God finds in God because God watches over his people. His eye is upon the sparrow and I know he watches me. The psalmist speaks of God's availability in verse 1. God is always ready to be our refuge. So the psalmist says, God is our refuge. The psalmist is not asking a question, is God our refuge? The psalmist is not asking, can God ever consider to be our refuge? The psalmist is stating categorically and confidently that God is our refuge and our strength. So I told you that this one ministered to me the first couple of nights after my bout with COVID, the second time, I couldn't sleep. And it is this psalm that ministered to me. And that song, all my life, you have been faithful. And, and my daughter tell me, say, me disturb the house, come and turn it on on the phone and turn it up. I didn't know they were hearing. I thought they were sleeping. But my friends, we have to remember that the God we have is available the psalmist says, God is. But you know, those two words are important. God is. But guess what? God not only is, God was. God was, 
God is and God shall forever be. We have a God who is a very present help in time of need. We need to know that our God is our refuge. Safe am I, safe am I in the hollow of his hands. Sheltered all, sheltered all in his love forevermore. No one can harm me. No foes alarm me. Why? Because he keeps both night and day. Safe am I, safe am I in the hollow of his hands. Yes, God is available, ready. He's not going to watch out for us and say, Yes, man, we talked talk to you yesterday, you never hear me. So God, you know, that's not our God. Our God says, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. We have a God who is always watching over us, always victorious, and we will find that victory. But not only is he available and always ready, he is dependable. Verse 2 and 3. Therefore, should we not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the hills be carried in the midst of the sea? Yes, my friends, though the oceans roar, yes, we have a God. You know, Mr. COVID is going on like, you know, but let us remind COVID that there is God and that COVID is not able to defeat the presence of God in our lives. Yes, my friends, we need to celebrate this God who is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in time of need. So we mustn't be afraid. So we mustn't be afraid no matter what happens in the earth. For the people of Israel, the mountains were these unshakable, irremovable things that they saw around them. And so when the psalmist is saying, though the mountains shake and tremble, though all of that happens and the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at the tumult, don't afraid. Don't afraid. Let us not be afraid, my friends. Our God is our refuge and our God is our strength. Our God is a present help in time of need. Therefore, we are not afraid. I must confess to you that I was a little afraid in my COVID time. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. I was a little afraid. I have a sister who died of COVID last year late. And when I saw her in hospital, um, she looked ill and hearty to me. And the Sunday she died, her husband told me that, just glimpsed her and the doctor says, things are looking up and she should be home by Tuesday. So when I got the call later on the same Sunday that I was told she'd be home Tuesday, the call was that she was doing badly. And half an hour after that, the call was that she was gone. And so when my day 10 came, it was a different day 10 for me. Because up until day 10, my sister was well-ish, or so we thought. And so I confess to you that I understand that there are times when fear is going to come. And strange enough, I was held up twice by gunmen and I wasn't afraid you know. Is that possible? Man put gun in my face. Lie down on the ground, boy. Two guns on top of my head. Lie down on the ground again. And I wasn't afraid. My friends, I pray for us that we'll hear the psalmist speaking to us today as a psalmist celebrates God's watching over us day by day and he says God is our refuge and our strength 
a very present help in time of need. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, nor the hills be carried in the midst of the sea. Why? The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The psalmist in 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they bring me comfort. Then the second portion, 4 and 5, I'm leaving with you now. We speak of the paradise of God or the paradise with God. Because the psalmist says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. What? God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help when the morning dawns. Yes, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. Yes, God will help her at the breaking of day. You see, my friends, this point the psalmist is driving home is that there is tranquility in the city of God. That is a place where they will study war no more. That is a place where they shall beat their spears and their swords into farming implements. Because our God shall restore. Yes, my friends, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures and treasures forevermore. Oh, what fellowship divine. I am God's and God belongs to me. Yes, in the presence of my God, I find paradise. Not only do I have protection, but I find paradise. Yes, its rivers bring joy. Verse 4. Verse 5. It is God's home. God dwells there. It is his holy habitation. And he is keeping us in that place. But also it is eternal. Yes, it is eternal. It shall not be moved. It will remain there forever and forever. So come, my friends. Let us revel in the protection of our God, knowing that someday we shall share in that paradise with God. We shall be in that place that John saw on the Isle of Patmos when he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God as a bride adorned for her husband. My friends, I pray that we borrow John's vision from the Isle of Patmos, and we will see this holy city, the New Jerusalem, the paradise of God, and we will know that that place is our home. You see, this earth is not our home. All it has is COVID, and gone man, and gone boy, and gone girl, and you know well, fire bombing. That's what we know on this earth. But there is going to come a time when he shall take us out of all of this and place us in that paradise that is his and will say, Come, you blessed are my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of this world. We thank God for the psalmist who reminds us of the protection of our God and reminds us that our God is going to give us paradise to share that paradise with him a place where we shall be with him forever and forever amen
in his presence. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am in, oh, I'm gonna sing.
The intercession this morning is taken from page 112, Form E. Let us pray for the fellowship of the Church of Christ and for all God's creatures, with all who confess the name of Jesus as Lord and Savior, we offer our prayers and praises in spirit and in truth. Father in heaven, with Jesus Christ, our great high priest, whoever lives to intercede for us, we uphold all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that, all, that they may fulfill their high calling in the faith. Father in heaven, we pray for the unfailing guidance of the Holy Spirit on those who are called to interpret and expound the will of the Lord to others. Father in heaven, we pray for all organizations within the fellowship of the body of Christ that their work may edify the people of God and hear faithful witness to the gospel. Father in heaven, we pray for all persons who do not share our confession of faith that with courage, truth, and love, we may work together with them and promote the common good. Father in heaven, for the leaders of our country and all who make decisions on our behalf, that they may be guided by the Spirit to direct our affairs in righteousness and peace. Father in heaven, for our judges, magistrates, and all who administer justice, that in all things they may seek to do your will, and to protect the rights and freedom of your people. Father in heaven, in our schools and in all other places of learning, may true knowledge, 
sound wisdom, and godly discipline ever be found. Father in heaven, to the poor, the hungry, the unemployed, and all victims of persecution and discrimination of any kind, may God in Christ help us all to bring relief, justice, and protection. Father in heaven, to all who suffer now from pain and disease, from human discomfort and misery, may God in Christ bring healing and joy for the renewal of their faith. Father in heaven, that we may use aright the fullness of the earth, that our pursuits in science and advancement of our skills may ever be in service of that humanity which is created in the image of God. Father in heaven, that we may never become the slaves of money or of lust for power, but may rather strive for victory through the power of love. Father in heaven, that with all who belong to the communion of saints, both living and departed, we may ever rejoice in the blessed assurance of that hope which has been won for us in Christ. Father in heaven, One hundred twenty three. If we say we have no sin, we are self deceived and are strangers to the truth. But if we confess our sins, our God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Using for me, let us confess our sin to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may be right in your will and walk in your ways in the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit we all are baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of our Lord Christ be always with you.
is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness no merit of my own I claim but wholly trust in Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand the ground is sinking sand. When very in this earthly race, I rest on its unchanging grace. In every wild and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the soul. Stand all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His power is covenant in blood, our bloody fence against the flood. When earthly hopes are swept away. He will uphold me on that day. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When the last trumpet voice shall sound, Oh, may I then in him be found, both in his righteousness alone, both less to stand before his throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Page one hundred twenty six. Father, we offer to you these gifts which you have given us. This bread, this wine, this money. To them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine from the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks, Father Almighty, ever living God. For by water the Holy Spirit. You have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels, with archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. 
All holy and glorious Father, our Creator God, we give you thanks because in your loving wisdom you brought all things into being and are truly worthy of praise from every creature you have made. Again and again we have turned away from you, yet in every age your steadfast love has called us to return, to live in union with you. For it is your eternal purpose to put new life into all things and to make them holy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who took our human nature upon him, you have redeemed the world from the bondage of sin and bondage to death. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have gathered a people to yourself to make known in every place his perfect offering, which he made to the glory of your name. Hear us, therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus, who is Christ and our Lord, and grant that these gifts and creatures of bread and wine may be unto us his body and his blood. For on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Christ took bread. When he gave thanks to you, Father, he broke it and gave to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Heavenly Father, rejoicing in His holy incarnation, His blessed passion and His perfect sacrifice made once all upon the cross, His mighty resurrection from the dead, His glorious ascension into heaven, looking for His coming again in glory, we offer to you this bread and this cup. We pray that we'll accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and grant that we and all who eat and drink of the body and blood of your Son, our great High Priest, may be renewed by our Holy Spirit, and be one body, one spirit in Him. Let faith and love increase in us, unite us with justice, Howard, all of the ministers of your word and sacraments, and with the whole people of God, living and departed, whom you have made for yourself. Then we pray you, Father God, confirm us in holiness, that we may be fall ready to join the company of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Matthew, the whole company of heaven, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again, forever giving you thanks and praise through him from whom all good things come. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of eternal praise, blessing and honor. Glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, in Him we pray.
of God, for the people of God, our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing that song of praise to
macho, tu macho, tu macho.
Dimensions of glory and endless delight I'll ever adore Thee and dwell in Thy sight I sing with a glittering crown my brow if ever I love thee my Jesus it's now Jesus said they will eat my flesh and drink my blood of eternal life and then I will raise up at last day. First post communion prayer is one four seven. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body, live his risen life. We who drink his cup, bring life to others. We upon whom your spirit shines, give life to the world. Help us to continue to your word, so that all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn for the blessing of the children is number 668. Tell me the story of Jesus.
of the Holy Trinity. Make you strong in faith and hope and love and keep you on every side, protected unto paradise. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, God, Son, God, Holy Spirit, rest me and abide with you, your loved ones near and far, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have the theme song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Have the collection for the mission share. There be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as our Father. Walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let me speak in with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take. Let this be my solemn vow To take each moment and live each moment In peace eternally Let there be peace on earth And let it begin with Let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, finally all are we. Walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take. Let this be my soul and fall To take each moment and live Each moment in peace eternally Let there be peace on earth And let it begin from you, o Lord, and of your own do we give you. Accept this money, accept us. Use us, use this money in your service. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. 
and uh, a special welcome to Father Franklin Jackson and uh, and uh, Mrs. Jackson and the rest of the family members who are here. My daughters are in. We have ladies. <laughs> and especially to Father Jackson for our celebrant and preacher for focusing us on the virtue of our Lord on <laughs> Psalm number 46 I think we will all remember that and we will not forget it Thank you very much, Father. Are there any other visitors? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> She's not a visitor. She's a member of St. Matthew's from from days gone, yes. Okay. We would like to celebrate with our colleagues their birthdays. And the birthday celebration for this week, we've got Kaylee Bart on the 21st, that's today, and Everton Powell on the 23rd. So let's have we sing a happy birthday to you, and may your wish be some true. I will. Happy birthday Dear God, we thank you for the blessings of life and especially for these your servants to whom you've given the joy of this another birthday in their lives. We ask to bless them and to keep them, cause your face to shine upon them and be gracious unto them. Good Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon them, giving them your love, your joy, your peace, your blessings of wisdom and understanding and all they need to walk with you, O God, walk closely, closely with you every day of their lives. Make them messengers of your truth and love and peace. And let the Holy Spirit guide and direct every moment of every day of their lives, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow will be Father's birthday. So, Father, have a wonderful day. And a number of our members will be celebrating their wedding anniversaries this week. We've got a Burley and Jacqueline Dawes on the 23rd, Alfado and Thel McCoy on the 24th and Clive and Joe Nicholas on the 24th. And Father, we are bring you a special day, wishing you the very best. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Loving God, to the body of children, 
Our sympathy and prayers go out to the family and friends of Reverend Dr. Evelyn Vernon, who lost her husband, Terence O'Brien. May his soul rest in peace. As you're all aware, Father Whitson is on leave for this month and we'll be back for the beginning of September. The Vocational Bible School starts tomorrow, Monday, the 22nd of August, and it goes on to the 26th. Mrs. Michelle Horton and family express thanks for the support given to the bereavement of her mother. As mentioned last week, we would update you on the missionary amount collected, and to date, we have collected 42,500, and the budgeted amount was actually 35,000. So, we encourage you to continue with your contribution, and the deadline for that will be the 31st of this month. So please continue. The Lapathon card is now available, and you may collect it from Mr. Grant. And the missionary tins and envelopes are still outstanding. Please remember to take them in. And as I mentioned, what our target is, we have already passed the target, but we would like to even go even further. Please remember your tithes and offering, weekly, monthly, or annually, so that we can continue making our pledge to the diocese. Please give donations for our colleague, Brian Pindlin for his medical treatment. The prayer request boxes are out and you may collect them and submit your prayer requests. There has been, as you are now aware, that the church, church office is opened for four days for the week now, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We'd like to thank all those who have continued to contribute, groceries, for those who are in need of them, and we ask those to continue and for others to join in as well. As you are all aware, we are still in the COVID protocol. And as mentioned last week, the monkeypox as well. But we thank God for preserving us. And we know that he's our refuge and our strength and our Presence in the time of need, so we give him thanks. Thank you. Would you like to sing? All right. Thank you. Our recessional hymn is 
Have you been to Jesus? And it's on the insert. It's not? Oh, I'm told it's on the Crusade song. What number? It's in the insert of the bulletin itself. Have you been to Jesus? Jesus for his cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace? It's all. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood of the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments covered as the white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you dress each moment by the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless as a white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Come and with your robe be white. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bride? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garment and wine with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul and clean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? In the soul? Can the blood of the Lamb? Are you gone and spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Thank you. 